Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is July 12th, 2022, 6 p.m. I'm in the Northeast Kingdom, and you guys are down at the Lower Theater in Bellas Falls. Uh, the uh, let's call this meeting to order. First item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of June 7th, 2022. I'd like a motion. No, I was trying to mess with the microphone volume. Just trying to get a little more volume on you here, Peter. It's a little low. Hang on a second. While you're doing that, I'll move to approve the minutes of June 7th, 2022. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a second? second. Yes, you did have a second, Peter. Okay, I'm, I'm having a little trouble. It's not coming through very loud here. So, uh, yeah. all right, motion was made and seconded to approve the minutes of July 27th, July 7th, uh, June 7th, 2022. Uh, any corrections, deletions, or additions? Hearing and seeing none. All those in favor would say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. I'll vote aye, motion carries. Uh, additions to the agenda that for routine administrative matters and our pressing matters that will require ratification at a future meeting. Uh, I have no, no additions, no. Anyone else on the board? Yes. Frederick. Yeah, we can talk about that. I can do that in the manager's report. Yeah. Can you repeat that? I can't hear a thing he said. Yeah, I'm not hearing anything either. All right. I Maybe you're but I'm not hearing. I didn't hear a word that. Uh, Rick Let me said. see if the owls aren't picking up on the microphone. Yeah, I, I didn't hear Rick either. Is that any louder by any chance? Is that any we, better? Can you hear me any better? We could hear you. It was um, the other people we couldn't hear. Can you hear Rick now? No, oh, I cannot hear Rick if he's oh. speaking. Okay. Yeah, I got I got my sound up, so maybe Rick can come over here on this side. Yeah, Rick's going to come over here to pick it up closer to this. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're coming up a oh, pretty good shape here now. I can get you good now. Yep. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Did you have a statement to make, Rick? Or because if you did, I didn't. Can't hear him. Not hearing a word. Not hearing. Okay, we're working on it. I know, yeah, it's still not right for some reason. I can hear you fine, Scott, it's just that. Uh, yeah, that's not picking up from the owl for some reason, Peter. Need a bigger hammer? Um, <laughs> need, need a bigger bird. Uh, could you use the old mics? Well, we don't have those guys. Um, 
those guys aren't on scene. They're down at the, um, they're at the studio at the moment. So I'll see if Fat can come back down and we can, we can try to get the microphone situation resolved. Right. It's just right now it doesn't show anything except just it doesn't say anything on here about any other microphone. So click on that drop down. That's just mute. Uh, try on the um, video, same thing, the, the drop down. All that does is take off and on the video. Nope, the arrow next to the words. Right. right. The little hat. It's on all cameras. So can you get the same thing with the hat on the mute? Picking up Gary now, along with you. Yep. Gary's standing here. There it is. Let's try that. See if you can hear us better now. I can hear you fine. I don't know if anybody else is coming on. Try someone else out there. Testing. Rick speaking. Can you hear me? Okay, I, there you go. I got that one. Sue, can here. you hear that? Yeah, I can hear it. Right, okay, let's, let's try it down. again, Rick. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, we had received a request from Heidi Loricella that the town remove the school bus stop signs because they're no longer being used. They're just keeping the bus stops at every family's house now. So Scott and I spoke with her and I just want to throw that on the agenda somewhere. What school bus, where, where's the school bus sign that she's talking about? They're all over town apparently. School bus stop here. They're sort of random, Peter. They were done over time as they had sort of, you know, aggregated pickup points. So I've asked uh, Andy just to go out and see what, what's out and about. I did talk to the superintendent. They are obsolete. They don't need them or, or you know, that's no requirement oh. for them to be there anymore. So. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Take them down as, you know, as we can get to them. Okay. Yep. Let's move on to uh, public comment on items not on the agenda. There's three minutes a person. Uh, yeah. Does anyone? Uh, I don't have anything. Does the uh, the board? Anybody Betsy, on board? Betsy came to the meeting. She wanted to give a a, a BIFTA related update, so she's coming to the. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. I can. I just want to invite you uh, to our annual meeting is Thursday at the Waypoint Center starting at 530. And we filled out a, a application for the Waypoint Center. So yep, I saw that. Um, I guess that's really all I wanted to say. So well, that's nice, short and sweet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wish everybody was that quick. <laughs> okay. Uh, manager report. Oh, wait. We're getting to you there. Cass, hang in there. <laughs> It'll be it's hard to follow Betsy. Yeah, well, that's know. true. Yeah. <laughs> Scott, you got any manager report? A couple things. Just want to talk a little bit about updating on some street lighting issues. We did have the uh, contractors back out again out on the main bridge. Remember the one <clears throat> street light that is on the renovated bridge that is closest to the old Sunel building was not operational. They came back out a second time um, after it was re-energized by Green Mountain Power and they did get it working. So I was gonna take a ride by tonight just to make sure that it was running, but um, I was assured that that light is now finally up, is now up and running. The same contractor is, is ordered a, a replacement ballast. One of the things we're trying to isolate, we've got about 20 different street lights that are not working in the downtown. And um, their recommendation was, as opposed to going and swapping out all the units, 
is to try to replace ballasts and see if that will that will increase the, the longevity of the uh, current lights. Um, we had looked at some proposals. Elijah had brought us some proposals to replace the entire poles and, and the entire uh, down the road to replace them in, in their entirety. And those prices are significantly more than this option to at least get the ballast replaced and get them back in operational. So the cost of the ballast, the cost of bringing two men in a bucket truck and about 20 of these units, it'll be closer to 10,000 to get all, if that's the actual troubleshooting shows that that's the actual problem, that's about a $10,000 fix. So we can get to the larger discussion with the board about replacement of, of entire units, which is much more expensive. So that work is underway. We'll see if that is hopefully gonna solve that problem in the short term. Scott? Yes, sir. Any warranty on those lights? Are some of them relatively recently purchased? Most of them are well past warranty. And I think some of them are 15 plus years old, if I remember. Not all of them, but some of them. Some of them are replaced because they were knocked down. We had a couple on Canal Street that got knocked over during the winter season. We had to replace them. All right. So, but the vast majority of them passed the initial 10 year period for the, okay. for the ballast and the lights themselves. The Opera House finally has all of the hearing impaired system wired and ready to go. The um, company that they purchased the system from is going to come out and work with Tim and then the staff on how it operates. So we're hoping to have that up and running by sometime no later than the beginning of August. So if you recall, the original system had been purchased back in 2019 and then through COVID it had not been worked on. And then when we found out about it later this spring, we, we prioritized to getting that thing up and running. So our fingers are crossed that that will be up and running hopefully so we can advertise that availability for people sometime in August. Um, Popcorn machine that's down there is 40 plus years old. It was um, bought in 1981. It's beyond repair at this point. It's becoming an electrical hazard and a concern. Um, so I do have some pricing to replace it. It's probably in the neighborhood. A, a like unit from the same company is about $7,500. At this point, I think it would make sense for us to replace it before we have some kind of problem with that, that unit burning up or burning out at some point and creating a real, a real hazard. The paving is still scheduled to begin the first week of August. We're working with basins. They've not identified a specific date yet to start with milling. Uh, they've been doing, I guess, quite a bit of work on Route 5, so they are a little behind on that schedule, but they are still telling us that they'll, make, that they'll get the milling done prior to the paving, which will begin in the beginning of August. So. At this point, we have our fingers crossed that those things will all come together and that we'll have all of that work done. As well as I talked with Andy about starting, if you remember, the school board had bought two of those rapid flashing beacon pedestrian crossing signals that we were going to install near the Central Elementary School. And so we're gonna start that project probably after the paving's done in August. So before school starts, um, before Labor Day, so we can get that up and running as well. So. Highway guys have been busy, lots of work that is ongoing, but we'll try to get all these things done and ready to go for the fall. So that was it for me, Peter. Okay, good. Uh, before we get into the regular agenda, I will uh, say that there will be an executive session tonight uh, on a real estate issue and a personnel issue, and there may be a comment after we come out of executive session, depending on the discussion in the board. Okay, I think Cass, we're about ready for you. Do you uh, okay. agenda to discuss animal control ordinance issues? Right. Um, as I said, it's hard to follow Betsy. She was so nice and concise. I've got it down to one sheet. I'll try to move right through it as best I can. <laughs> Greetings and good evening to all my neighbors. My name is Cass Wright. I'm your duly appointed animal control officer. And I'd like to use this opportunity to remind everyone about some concerns I have this upcoming summer and autumn seasons for all of you exercising the privilege of being dog owners or canine care providers. First and foremost, our leash laws. Vermont statute states that all dogs not under strict and immediate voice command must be kept on a leash held by its owner, its handler rather, whenever it is anywhere in public. 
This is far further narrowed by the Rockingham Town Ordinance that all dogs appearing anywhere in public in the villages of Saxons River or Bellis Falls that are not contained inside a motor vehicle must be kept on a leash held by its handler at all times, no exceptions allowed. Remember, please, there are no end runs or workarounds to this law, not even for carrying dogs or attaching dogs to bicycles or scooters. Let me say this again for emphasis. All dogs in public spaces and places in Bellis Falls and Saxons River must be kept either in a vehicle or held on a leash, period. This is true of all dogs living in Saxons River or Bellis Falls or even visiting either village with their owners. Again, no exception. Next, the citizenship of your dog. Vermont state statutes demand that all dogs must be vaccinated routinely for rabies every three years without lapse, starting ideally at 90 days of age, but certainly by their sixth month by a licensed veterinarian, and that once done, they be registered in their town of residence with their town clerk, and that tags identifying that vaccination and that registration be attached to that dog's collar, and that the collar with those tags attached be kept upon that animal at all times without fail. Throughout Saxons River, Bells Falls, Rockingham and everywhere else in the state of Vermont. If this seems severe or overly strict, let me point out that sooner or later, all dogs escape their owner's homes or vehicles and often are recovered by other people, including myself. This brings me quickly, but firmly to the topic of loose dogs. Folks, if you encounter a loose dog, do not approach them, do not touch them, do not go near them. Call me immediately, 289-7327-247. I will dispatch myself as quickly as I can to assess the situation. Again, even if you are in the mood to be a good Samaritan, it is actually counterproductive for you to become proximity or physically involved with that animal. Um, one of the most important uh, pieces of logic behind this is that about 18 times out of 20, a loose running dog is being followed by its owner <laughs> by about five to eight minutes. And that uh, taking that dog into your custody, even for the best principles, breaks that chain of probability to get them back. Please call me. I will assess the situation. I will do what is necessary. Don't you get near a loose dog. This is critical. Um, without those tags, I'm going to talk about tags on the collar. I cannot ascertain your dog's ownership or identity or medical status. And if I can't solve the riddle of who he or she belongs to, I'll have to transport that dog all the way down to the Wyndham County Humane Society in Dummerston. And when that happens, it is a long and expensive process to get your dog back. Lastly, please do clean up behind your dogs when you take them out for their exercise. This means always having a plastic grocery type bag with you or some type of disposable mitt with which to retrieve your dog's feces and transport that waste to an appropriate public waste container, or if need be, all the way back home. This is a legal requirement cited specifically by a town of Rockingham ordinance and enforceable in all six villages and everywhere in between. Finally, neglecting any of these requirements can result in being issued citations by myself or a Wyndham County Deputy Sheriff with fines starting at $25 all the way up into hundreds. and might even result in district court appearances, which I much prefer to avoid as I'm sure would any of my neighbors. 
In closing, let me urge my fellow dog owners to reach out to me with any canine concerns or questions or requests for help of any sort. My number is 289-7327 and my information can be found quoted on the health department page of the Rocky Am Town website. What questions can I answer? Questions from my board? Right. Uh, I noticed in the Saxons River <clears throat> Facebook page that people often mention their lost pets. Do you find social media to be something that's helpful? In oh, Chris, it's probably it's probably the biggest best tool I have on my belt right now. Um, when I take charge of a loose dog, that is the first thing I do is to get them on social media, get them on Facebook, get them on every type of online exposure. I can. And I have to say, Knockwood has been pretty darn reliable. This community comes together pretty quickly, helping to reunite the dog with the owner, which is ultimately my goal. Thanks. Um, Cass? Yes. Um, in addition to that, it might be good uh, to post on social media everything you just read to us. Um, just, you know, um, there's, I don't know, four, five, six uh, local groups uh, there, Rocky right. in Progress, mm -hmm. Bellows Falls, looking forward. That, that's an excellent idea. I think I'll probably draft this up into a little bit <laughs> more concise, be better flowing. Uh, it, uh, it, would, it would be good. And then, you know, people can tell others. Um, one thing I wasn't aware of. Uh, so that's, this includes even walking in the town forest and, and places like that, right? If it's anywhere in the villages of Bellis Falls or Saxons River, every dog must be on a leash at all times, held nonstop by its handler. Okay, so even at the Historical Society's Riverfront Park, if that would apply? Yep, yep, anyway, anywhere in Bellis Falls or, or Saxons River. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, <clears throat> the governing state statutes says that all dogs um, in Vermont in general must be under strict and immediate voice command. Um, this is, as I mentioned, this is further narrowed uh, for us by a uh, Rockingham Town ordinance that all dogs appearing anywhere in public in those villages must be kept on on a lead. Um, all I can say about the rest is make sure you know where you are. Make sure if if you are in Rockham outside those villages and you want to keep your dog under voice command, make sure you truly have voice command. Sometimes we tend to look at our pet ownership through, uh, through rose colored spectacles. We think we have a lot more control than we do. Uh, that has a lot to do with the uh, immense upspike this year of, uh, of dog bites across the town of Rockingham. Uh, people being out and about on a cheery, uh, bright uh, weather day and uh, their dog is with them and he behaves until he sees something he doesn't like and then uh, tragedy ensues. Cass, one thing I would like to do is see if you can mention on the enforcement of unlicensed dogs. Uh, yeah, um, I, I am in ongoing discussions uh, with Scott and with Kathleen about that. Um, I feel that we have to do something. Um, uh, back even as recently as 10, 12 years ago, if you were to print out the pages of dog res registration, the town of Rockingham, it would have run up to up to close to 50 pages. And now, sadly, I can accomplish that same goal in under two. So that gives you an idea of how horrendously uh, our dog registration obligations have dropped off. Um, we've got to get back up on that horse somehow. Um, I don't yet want to entertain the idea of actually taking a whole list and going door to door. That seems a little intrusive. It could be done. Um, you know, I have I had offers of help that way from the Wyndham County Sheriff's and our Bells Falls Police Department to assist me. Um, 
I want to try some other approaches. Um, it, it can't be allowed to get much worse. It is at a critical stage. Um, it's very much on my mind. Thank you for bringing that up, Peter. Um, I, I noticed a couple of years ago that we did have the sheriff go around uh, with a list and uh, that did motivate some activity, but not very much. And then uh, it's just kind of set by the wayside. Sorry to cut you, Bonnie, go ahead. Oh, it's okay. Um, would it be feasible to contact um, all the area vet, vets and uh, request that they, when they when they have a dog patient, take note of their dog tag? And if people say, well, they're not, they don't have a dog tag, uh, um, perhaps let us know. I, I have a, approached that topic with several vets and gotten a very, a very polite and cool reception. Um, yeah, I, they're not into it. <laughs> it's rather like asking uh, human doctors to, uh, to share information um, open-handedly. Um, they're very good about working with me when I have a bite situation to confirm uh, vaccinations and inoculations. Uh, but beyond that, um, uh, their information is considered to be uh, to be privileged. Well, I guess you could we could just request that um, they ask for that information on intake, and if people say they don't have one, uh, the vet could perhaps remind them of the importance of getting one, just as an inducement there. And maybe not tell them, you know, snitch on people, but just sort of help yeah. us, uh, you know. I've actually approached that, Bonnie, and. Uh, and, so and uh, it was it was turned down. Okay, well, just an idea. And, okay, and not bad. Appreciate it. Okay, let's let's move along here. We got a lengthy agenda here tonight, and some long Rick, discussions coming up. So, uh, yeah, can, Rick had one more follow up. Just no, go Rick. ahead. Um, when you apprehend a dog that's missing and isn't registered, does that does that person get a fine? No. Um, I could go that route. Um, I, I try to indicate to people that they really do need to register their dog. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, quite often um, what the case is, is that the dog often is registered. And then I hear the song and dance about the kitchen drawer. Oh, you know, all the dog tags fell off. And I say, listen, don't use those silly little things they give you for the tags. You know, get a regular jump rate from the hardware store, put it on there so it will stay on. The tag does me no good in finding you if it's inside the kitchen drawer. Uh, so I haven't gone that route yet. I find I have to do a little bit of a balancing act. On the one hand, I'm prepared to be as firm as I need to be to get good compliance from people. At the same time, when I walk down Atkinson Street and someone's coming at me, with a dog, I want to be able to smile and wave and walk up and chat them up without them going, oh, God, I'm scared of the drawer, sir. You know, and, and, and cutting up a time frame, which I have actually had happen a couple of times in extreme circumstances. Okay. So I have to try and keep things on the up and up and bright. But uh, yeah, I, I have all this firmly in mind and uh, I need to do better. We need to do better. And uh, I'm working on it, I promise. Thank you okay, yeah. let's let's uh, close this discussion out. Deb, are you still on there? I saw your hand earlier. Were you uh, did you have a comment or did you sign off? Deb Wright. I don't see signed, her. Must have signed off. Have okay, signed. let's move on to item number two, which is the update to the cemetery committee proposal. There are some articles in your packet to look at if you haven't already. Scott, I'll let you lead this one off. Yep, so there's a couple of things, I guess, you know, we had a sort of preliminary conversation about if we wanted to go forward and establish formally through the board, uh, a cemetery committee, you know, other communities have done that and they have various types of responsibilities. Um, so there was, you know, just for your information, how Brattleboro currently has their committee established. Um, the other information is more for building our conversation towards budget as we look towards our next round of, of conversations about next year's budget. And, and we had discussed about 
the costs of potentially improving some of the grounds and some of the uh, beyond just the grass cutting and some of the things that we have been talking about. And just want to give you a sense of just again, some of the costs of what other communities have found when they've been working, especially in historic cemeteries in order to you know, raise stones and, and repair stones and, and try to uh, bring some of these um, facilities back up and in, in, you know, into a, a better condition. So I just wanted those more for the board's information and depending upon how the board wants, if you want us to draft up something for you to consider um, for your September meeting to establish a committee on a more formal basis. Uh, Scott, I thought uh, Walter was gonna come to us in August with some, some information as far as that committee went. Um, I think we're gonna talk about it a little bit up at the, um, right up at the meeting Meaning house. Yeah. Correct. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure that, uh, I thought he'd talked to him and he said he was gonna have something information right. maybe that's what we're going to all right uh anyone else have any comments on this i ain't seeing any let's move on to number three discuss <laughs> issues with lower bartonsville i don't know if anyone's here from there there is supposed to be four people yes Anybody folks here, Scott? Are, yes folks are here you guys want to come up maybe up to the sit up at the dais and certainly we can pick you up easier on the microphone and with the uh with the video as well your patience. Sorry about all our technical problems. Okay, there's a uh, information in your packet about this issue, uh, speeding, and a few other items. Uh, there's also a copy of uh, an old copy of the Wyndham Sheriff's Department uh, contract uh, proposal. Not a proposal, but their contract form. It does state and. Uh, a charge of $51 per hour, but the current one is now 60 per hour. Correct. Uh, you people from Bartonsville are looking for 30 hours per month. From what I understand in your email, um, that equates to $1,800 a month, uh, just for people's information. And that equals out to $22,600 a year. Uh, we have no money in the budget set aside for police. And uh, Rockingham right now, and we have had feedback from people objecting to the fact that they're going to pay for protection of one area of town in their taxes. So that being said, uh, you're on. Go for it. Uh, my name is Steve Chipman. I live at 170 Lower Bartonsville Road. Uh, this is my wife, Sarah Jane, who also lives at 170 Lower Bartonsville Road, and John and Deb Hart, who live on Lower Bartonsville Road in the old schoolhouse, right? Down by Marty Campbell here. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'd like to introduce a few things to the board and to make the town aware of some of what's happening up at Lower Bartonsville. And I can appreciate that in other parts of town, there would be a concern that taxpayer money was being spent in Lower Bartonsville. But we pay taxes too. And um, a part of what we'd like to hear from the board is on a matter related to say traffic or speeding. Um, what do you do? What do you do when uh, Saxon's River comes and says they're- Saxon's River has their own police department. They, they hire the Wyndham Sheriff's on their own. They don't pay, they for it by, pay for it by themselves. So if we fast forward to what are our, um, what are our options here in terms of the municipal- well, Here's a, here's a situation. If if the board decides to provide police protection, it would probably have to be for the whole town. And if you go back in history, every time it's been brought up with that dirty six letter word of merger, uh, <laughs> I hate to bring that up, but it's always been defeated from Rockingham saying they do not want police coverage in the town of Rockingham, which you are part of. Uh, if we provide it uh, or decide to go with it, then everybody else is going to jump on a bandwagon uh, saying they want the same coverage. So uh, it, it, it opens up a lot of uh, uh, Pandora boxes uh, that we are looking at. Uh, I've talked with Sue Hammond, who's on here, uh, same as I am, and she's told me she's explained to you people some of the issues and that she doesn't think that you need 30 hours of coverage either. So 
It may be, a, we'd have to talk with the manager about it and bring it back up again at, a, at another time, uh, another meeting. And, um, but it may be a factor that we try and consult with the police and have them do spot, spot uh, uh, speed checks up there. Or uh, as Sue told me that uh, once a couple of people get the hundred dollar ticket for speeding, they'll, uh, they perhaps they'll smarten up, uh, but who knows? Uh, from what Sue tells me, most of the traffic uh, in, uh, is from north to south versus south to north. So it looks like they're skirting something around Chester because they, Chester is very adamant about speeding up there. You, you go a mile over the limit and they're on you. Doesn't make much long. That's, uh, that's the way they work. So, uh, yeah, Peter. You know, can I interject here for a second? Yeah, it's actually, you, yeah, it's, you, you, yeah, it's actually both way. It's a lot of it is commuters. So it's the same commuters. They go, they're probably heading to the interstate in the morning and then heading back in the afternoon. So it's not that it's just you know, only north to south. And then there are is speeding throughout the day. But the, the biggest offenders, the ones going the fastest tend to be in that um, morning commute and evening commute hours. But they're consistent. I mean, they're every morning they're going that fast. Yeah, in the and, in the uh, packet, there's uh, Scott also uh, with our speed uh, uh, sign that we put out there. It does show the the uh, breakdown of the. It's kind of surprising. There's four thousand or forty one hundred people going over or going less than forty miles an hour. I couldn't believe there's that much traffic in Bartonsville. But I don't know how long the sign was there, Scott. Was that there about a month or so? Pretty close, Peter. Yeah, okay. A little shy of a month. All right, so it's pretty good slough traffic going up there. Uh, Bonnie, you had a, I see your hand up. Uh, yeah, um, this would take some time, but something uh, sort of similar to this happened in the city of Baltimore when I lived there. There was one uh, neighborhood that wanted more police protection than the rest of the city. And they formed a special zone, and the people there paid a little extra in taxes for specific, uh, you know, policing and stuff like that. I don't know if uh, want to create a boundary to Lower Barkinsville and see if the residents there would be interested in that to help, uh, you know, cover this cost. It, it's a it, it's a hard thing because we don't have Rockingham police. Right. And they, they supposedly don't want it. That's what we were told at several meetings. So even though it's been discussed at town meeting, it's been, it's been uh, kind of run down. They don't really want police in Rockingham, of course. At that point, at one point, it was the Bellas Falls Police Department. They were trying to expand out there. And uh, with the territorial issues we have in this town, it, that, that didn't seem to fly very far either. Uh, Sue, I see your, your hand up. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to say that it's not just <clears throat> Lower Bartonsville people who are complaining about speeding. Um, I hear these complaints from um, Cambridgeport Road, from Parker, uh, Brockways Mills Road, from Pleasant Valley Road. I think the issue is, you know, something we can discuss at our budget time is whether we want to budget in not, not full-time policing in Rockingham, which is what people oppose to. They oppose to making the Bellows Falls police townwide because the view was we would never see them. They would still stay in Bellas Falls. They would never get out to rural Rockingham. This is different in my view of contracting out for, for speed control and for the times when we have a complaint of um, someone doing something illegal on our roads um, and we need to, we need police presence. We need someone to respond and to get on that list with the Vermont State Police, we're at the bottom of the list if it's something they don't consider, you know, life and death. But if you had, if we could consider a townwide um, police contract with uh, the Wyndham County Police, that would spend some time in Bartonsville dealing with speed, some time with Upper Bartonsville, some time in um, you know, the other roads where people do complain about the problems. Um, I don't think Bartonsville is looking for, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Sarah um, and others in the room, we're not looking for only exclusive presence in Bartonsville. We want control of the speeding and the use of 
driving down the road with a cell phone um, in town wide because it's a problem town wide. Um, I think that's what's being raised here is looking at the possibility of, of contracting out and figuring out is that 20 hours a week? Is it 30 hours a week? I don't, I don't know. I mean, a month, sorry. I don't know what that would be. Um, and the other thing, when you look at the, the, the packet information with the people going over 40, those sign, I mean, it's something maybe if the sign can be programmed in the future, it should be over 25, not over 40, because our speed limit is 25. And when you break it down over those going over 25, over a quarter of the popular, over the quarter of the drivers were going over 25 miles an hour. And I think it was 5%, if I remember right, were going over 40. And when you live on a very narrow road with a lot of walkers and a lot of animals that the Lower Bartonsville Road is and some of our other roads in town, even going over 30, is a problem. And so I don't want, if you look at that chart and it looks like a tiny little sliver, it's not a tiny little sliver when you're walking that road and someone is speeding by at 35 miles an hour. So I just wanted to make that clear. It's interesting that you mentioned the cell phone uh, enforcement because that's very lax in the whole state. Uh, you mm -hmm. see drivers every day of the week with their cell phones in their yap and their they're talking, and I don't know if they don't know how to use their car uh, phones or how they can hook them up. Maybe that's the problem. They don't know how to do the Bluetooth offer option on their car, and they won't have that issue. But anyway, uh, that that's a, that's a real laugher when you stop to look at it, because like you can sit in Bells Falls Village, and you can watch them go through yapping on the cell phone every day of the week, 24-7. So that's not the only, and speeding is not the only issue in, in Rockingham. There are some interesting comments on Facebook in regards to the bridge on 121 that's going to be closed that's possibly for 18 months. Uh, pretty soon there's a meeting tomorrow night in Westminster about that, but uh, there's a couple of comments there about and speeding. Now it's going to end up going over on back Westminster Road that used to fly through Gaysville. So it's an issue everywhere, not just here and I think we need to talk a little bit more in depth on this in another meeting here probably in September I'm going to guess be the best time for that so uh, we can work on it and as you say there's no money in the budget and I think we'd have to as Sue said work on something about uh, getting money set aside in the, in the in the coming budget for that. Can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. Um, yeah go ahead. Steve Chipman again. Someone I mentioned I don't know if it was Sue or yourself that um, some of the sort of default actions that come from a, a request from a specific village like Bartlesville then sort of plays out with other locations in town. You know, if you do it to them, you got to do it for us. Um, is that a is that something that would hold true in um, say fireworks? Um, we had a display on the 4th across the street from us that would rival the Saxons River 4th of July. Um, I've been to both now. I've been to when I used to have that, and I just sat in my bedroom and listened for a couple of hours. And we had a couple wind up in the, in the yard. And so, you know, coming to the board or letting the town know that this is happening, um, all right. There, as I understand it, there is a statute from the state dealing with fireworks. Anybody that has fireworks, other than a licensed operator for fireworks, is supposed to get a permit from the state of Vermont. The town of Rockingham does not have such an ordinance. We can possibly uh, create one, but that's that's then becomes the matter of enforcement. So enforcement uh, of what's happening out there on the on the field in the street. So um, does the town have to look to another entity, state police? What, what is the, how does it work? Well, I, I think the fire departments can control some of that to the, some degree, uh, because uh, I know in Saxon River, uh, we, we contacted the trustees because our land abuts an, an open field and they were shooting them off uh, uh, unbelievably in dry weather and we could just see the field catching on fire and whatever but uh they posted a bunch of signs and, and then the owner of the field finally fenced it off 
So <laughs> that, that's one way we handle it out there. But I mean, I, I think the fire department, uh, I know Larry White's pretty active about chasing down uh, illegal burns and things like that. Uh, so so again, is it safe to assume that, you know, in the moment when they start, and usually at dusk when they start, they start everywhere, you know, on a fourth holiday weekend, that there's really no place to call. There's no one who's going to come out and stop it. Is, is that a safe assumption in, in truth? Well, I guess it's a little bit confusing sometimes because if you look to our neighbor to the north, Springfield, they actually have an ordinance where they will allow you to have displays and they will actually permit your display and the fire commissioner will actually come out to your house before your display and issue you a, a permit from the city for, for your particular, you know, whatever event that you're doing. We had talked about that and I, I, I don't think the board was comfortable going to that level to try to accommodate people because we get calls every year from a lot of people, quite frankly, usually more than a dozen who say, we wanna do a, a large display and we wanna get a permit. So it, it's really, a, 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 it puts the community in a difficult position because we've got a, a host of people who wanna do it and they're allowed to. Well, basically, once once they get a, a permit from a, a, a city or an organization, then we have a, a folks like yourself who are sort of sitting there saying, well, we would appreciate you not blowing our fireworks into our yard. And I can understand why that's annoying too. This one went up and over our house and then lodged itself down next to our house. Oh, I know. I see people blowing off these gigantic mortars, the kind that you see at like a home base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, dry, it's dry out, and this was a separate one that was in our duct. Yeah, it's, it's, it's dry a... out, and these our structures. We have an old house; it's built from wood. Right. And last year, or a couple of years ago, we tried calling the state police and said, uh, "Can you make it stop?" And we were just told, right. "We can't. We don't have the manpower, or whatever." But what do we do? The same neighbors have race uh, dirt bikes up and down the road. They're not roadworthy vehicles. Right. These kids are not wearing helmets. They turn around in our driveway. They rev, you know, they race side by side on our tiny little road. And we don't have anybody we can call. We that's why we started this. You know the request. We just we have nobody we can call. We can't. The sheriff can't do anything. The state police can't do anything. When the state police barracks was right up the road on 103, we could call and they would maybe send somebody down in a cruiser at least discourage some of this stuff. Now we've got nobody. We're we've got. Yeah, and we're not blaming the town. We're, we're not no, it's the frustrating because we feel the same stuff. Frustration. I guess we're looking for some guidance as to right. how we can. Um, better respond to some things that are happening. But, you know, we've been there uh, 30 years and more now, and we've seen it come and go and come and go, and it's back. And uh, yeah, uh, the needles and the drug exchanges are new, mm -hmm. I have to say. But um, it's like the word got out that nobody's paying attention on our road, and it's a good place to go and throw your trash and. Um, the fireworks. One of our neighbors who planned to be here, but he's he's sick. Um, somebody drove by their house about three weeks ago and shot off a gun as they drove by their house. And two of the families who are sort of new in our neighborhood um, have both remarked to me that we wish we didn't buy a house here. We hate it. We don't feel safe. Um, that makes me sad. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Peter, Rick had a, a question or wanted to follow up. Um, question of the speed bumps, would that be any help to you? I think it would. I think it might, but we, I think it's not going to be helpful by itself. I think it will be a fun thing for some people. Yeah, some, if you're going fast enough, those things can really ruin the undercarriage of your car. So it, I don't know that these people care. <laughs> That's what I know. I think it would be effective. I think it would be effective in addition to some policing because these people need to see um, intermittently. Oh, the police do come down this road. 
And they're not always here at noon on this day. They're here at different times. You know, we just, we just need a presence. I have a backup. Yeah. And in terms of what happens in the town gravel pit, I feel the town has responsibility for that. And is there dirt bike racing? Is there gunfire, fireworks? Oh, yeah. yeah. You yeah. name it. So it's it's like target uh, practice, is what I, you know, the, the, the repetition and the cadence of the firing is like target practice. Is what so that, that's something I feel we do have responsibility for. That's town property. So as far as speed bumps go, I think we need to check with Andy to see how that's going to work with the plowing out there on the road. Sometimes it damages the truck's equipment and things, so that could get costly as far as uh, that goes. And, you know, there's, there's issues with top with, with speed bumps. That was mentioned once of putting them into the square in Bells Falls, the slow traffic. And you can see that that hasn't happened yet either. So uh, I think we need to delve into this project a little bit more and come up with some sort of a uh, resolution or something that would be applicable for everybody. Uh, you know, uh, if it means we create a district and you pay for your own police, you know, coverage, that's, that's one way of doing it. I don't think that's uh, the smart way to do it. I think it needs to be, as Sue said, it needs to be covered for town wide. And we just, um, you know, uh, but there's issues that we have to deal with to, and, and talk to other uh, entities about that situation. So you have to give us a little bit of time to deal with this. I don't know if you have any comments, Scott. Well, I think Elijah, yeah, Elijah had a comment, and then I'll, I'll follow up on something, Peter. Okay. Yeah. So Go ahead, Elijah. I know speed bumps are sometimes not popular, um, but I think they can be effective. I know they're not going to solve everybody, but uh, I don't think that any one solution is going to um, cure all the problems. I think it's just uh, it's as many little things as you can do. Um, you know, having the policing is not going to necessarily cure all the problems either, because unless you're going to have a police car sitting there 24 hours a day, um, you're still going to have people speeding and, you know, doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. But um, every little thing is a deterrent. Um, so I think that we should look seriously at speed bumps. I think we should look at speed bumps in Bartonsville. I think we should look at speed bumps on the square. Um, you know, there's going to be people who don't like them, but there's also people who are not kind of want to slow down. And, uh, that's the whole point. But um, that's that's something I think we should seriously consider. And I think that another uh, thing might be the to install the uh, speed radar signs permanently on either side of the village up there. Mm -hmm. May I say something about speed bumps? Yeah, I saw your hand up, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, I did speak to some of my neighbors last year about possibly putting speed bumps in because on our section of the road, it's absolutely straight and it's kind of like a racetrack sometimes. But um, but I was told that that would just make the offenders angry and they might retaliate, and we don't we don't want that. And they could retaliate against us, whether or not we have asked for it, because we have the, the very straight, long, straight road. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, several people are worried about retaliation. Um, you know, I, I walk frequently with a, a couple other people, and I walk with a toddler and a stroller, and I walk with my dog and my neighbor's dog. And um, so many times I ask people to slow down, or I you know, wave to them and say, hey, or I'll, I'll yell, slow down. And the way that people respond is terrifying. It's road rage kind of stuff. We had a road rage incident last year on our road, and we've had a couple of other, um, I would call it road rage, where somebody, um, you know, speeds up or drives on somebody's lawn or um, it, it, it's a scary feeling. This used to be a really safe little village to walk in or be out in your yard. And now we're, uh, everybody's really feeling very anxious. It's not a good feeling. And we don't have anybody that we can call. And we right, have uh, Scott, you have final um, comments here so we can move along? Yeah, just, I guess on a couple of items, Peter, we, 
I know that Westminster, and I also believe that um, Saxons River has been experiencing some concerns with the, the sheriff's current contracts because the sheriff's having difficulty meeting their obligations to those two communities. When we talked to Westminster uh, recently, they weren't, uh, they were looking at some problems and I, I'm not sure what's happening in Saxons River. If, if we're gonna pursue this, I think we would have to meet with the sheriff and see if there's the ability to, to provide any kind of coverage that would be at least reasonable so that uh, people feel like they're getting some value for that money. Uh, the second piece, just on speed homes and other communities I've worked in, we created policies where mm -hmm. the neighborhood would create a petition. And so you'd have to go to your neighbors and talk to your neighbors and get their approval. And if the neighbors approved, we would put them in temporarily so they could be removed after a period of time. And then we would then ask the neighbors, um, do they want them to then have a more permanent or another solution um, for the problem? And what I found was, probably did this eight or 10 times in, in a variety of different communities. And about 90% of the time, the neighbors who asked to put them in after six months asked me to take them out because they were annoyed at driving over them constantly. And it's, it's just the nature of what they are. So um, that's just a consideration. So if we did anything, I'd recommend that we do something temporarily, work with the neighborhood, see if it solves a problem. And then if it does, look at a more long-term type permanent solution. But that's just- Do we have one final comment here so we can move along? Well, yeah, it was just again about the speed humps. So when we've had this discussion, um, actually many years ago with Mike Hines and it was, and I think Everett at the time too, that it was too difficult for the plowing to deal with speed humps. They wouldn't last very long. They would destroy the trucks and destroy the humps. Um, so it would have to be some temporary thing which you'd put down in the summer. Um, but I mean, we also have the world, you know, we have a gigantic speed hump just before you get to the railroad tracks and that doesn't slow down a lot of people either. The covered bridge, they, they fly through that too. So I, I kind of don't, I don't get a sense that it's going uh, to be very effective. I think the most effective thing will be um, the people, because it tends to be, I mean, we do have people who just come through our road, but it tends to be the same people every, um, every day or every work day. If they randomly, if they think they're going to get a ticket, like when I enter Chester, I already think I'm going to get a ticket. I better slow down. Um, it's, but it's got to be random and it's got to be over a period of time. I think that would be the, the most effective. You're still going to get the random person coming through, but if enough people who use that road every day get a several hundred dollars worth of tickets, that will slow them down. They know there's a chance. Um, and that's the case, I think, in, in town wide. Um, and also, as Sarah and um, Steve had said, you know, having someone knowing who we can call when we have these um, complaints of illegal activity that is happening on our road and knowing that we're going to get a response. That's what not just Bartonsville wants, but that's what the rest of Rocky wants, I would believe. Okay, okay. let's, uh, Scott, let's plan to get this on a, a future agenda, probably September, yeah. maybe if we're lucky and we can uh, move along with that, because we'll, at that point, we'll be thinking about considering uh, budget considerations. Right to be the fireworks control officer. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's that's, dogs. That's expired fireworks, Steve, or is that a live one? Sounds like ATF, right? It'll become the alcohol tobacco fireworks. <laughs> okay, let's uh, thank you guys for coming in, by the way. Uh, we, we do hear your concerns, and we're not going to just drop it. All right, uh, let's move on to uh, uh, item number four, which is a remote scale, a remote scale indicator display down at the uh, Wait, uh, recycling center. Uh, there's information in your packet, and right. we'll we'll need a motion to proceed with this tonight. So I've got one sort of written up here. So, uh, Scott, you want to? Yep. The state is the state uh, weights and measures now re requires um, a visible display. So if you go over any type of device that that you know weighs something the person has to be able to see it, the customer, in order for it to be considered in compliance. And, and that scale is a registered uh, with the state. So the company that did the scale install came down, they gave us a proposal on what it would cost for an LED indicator. 
as well as it's about another $1,250 roughly for the electrical work that would go along with that to make that uh, system work. So at this point, we're asking the board to just authorize that moving ahead with Fairbanks proposal to do the uh, LED display. And then we'll also spend, like I said, about $1,250 roughly on the electrical to come into compliance with the state requirement. So that uh, looks to be about $4,000, uh, Scott, between yes. 12 and 28. So yep. we make a motion to install a display for the scale uh, and electric work not to exceed $4,000. I need a motion to that effect. So moved. Thank you. You'll hear a second. A second. And Elijah seconded. Okay, I heard that. Motion is made to and seconded to install display for the scale and electric uh, at the recycling center not to exceed $4,000. We have a bid from Fairbanks at $2,862 and roughly $1,200 from uh, Lawrence and Lover, who will be doing the electrical. Uh, any comments? Do we ever bid out electrical work to other? Vendors, or do we use the same people? No, we try to do that. In fact, we've been using different contractors in this building. We've been using different contractors for the street lighting, and a lot of it just comes down to availability. And and quite frankly, at this point, we're we're having a difficult time getting contractors to respond. Mm -hmm. Most of our jobs are sort of ad hoc for them. So yeah, okay. Okay, are you ready for the question? All yes. those in favor would say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion carries. You can notify the parties there, Scott, if you need to. Very good. Thank you, Peter. Hey, uh, next item is the approved grant agreement to Town Highway Class 2 roadway paving. Uh, there's a whole bunch of paperwork in your <laughs> packet there. The state can't do much without lots and lots of paper to go with it. Yeah. But the good news is that this will be an offset to our current year budget. So this will be 145,000, which will be directly applied against our costs for the Pleasant Valley Road uh, repaving project. So this is actually good news for us to be able to uh, authorize this agreement and move forward with that project. Uh, a couple of questions. I noticed on the... Uh page, second page here, page three of 19, it says uh, that uh, we're getting a grant for 145,000, but there's a 20% match, which amounts to roughly 29,000. Do we have the funds for that or is that an in kind or? Well, that's just part of our, we already have the, the money, remember the 650 set aside for the total paving project. So that that just gets absorbed. Okay. In, into yeah. the, in, so uh, we'll need a motion to adopt or accept the grant agreement and authorize the manager to sign. Somebody want to make the motion or accept the one I just made? I, I so move what, what you said, Peter. <laughs> okay, right. I'll, I'll the, the manager. We'll hear a second. A second. Okay, motion made and seconded to adopt the grant agreement for $145,000 uh, from the state and authorize the manager to sign the document. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay, motion carries. Moving right along to item five, approved grant agreement. Uh, no, that's what we just did. Approval expenditure for train station project environmental review. Some right there on the packet. It's a right. Gary's there to explain it, I guess, or attempt to. Right. It's a little bit of background on this. We have multiple agencies that we're requ requesting funding from. And so Gary's trying to coordinate with the various agencies, their required environmental work so that we don't end up you know, spending more money that we don't that we don't necessarily need to spend in order to be in compliance for this funding stack. So this is sort of a, another step along that along that way, but I think Gary can kind of get into some more of the detail of that for you. Yeah. So uh, there's there's two reasons for for this being on here. As Scott just described uh, the requirement for federal funds, and the other piece is just to let the public know uh, that we are doing this environmental review, and uh, and basically it could uh, it could be. 
uh, broken up into a few different uh, projects. And as, as Scott was saying, that would end up being um, uh, a, a, a time cost and a dollar cost additional. So, um, so what we're doing here is um, looking at the, um, the whole project and uh, holding off on uh, executing um, like the downtown transportation fund, the $200,000 grant, holding off on that uh, so that we can do the um, environmental review uh, once, have uh, uh, choose a firm that is uh, familiar with working with um, rail, rail stations um, and the state and the federal agencies, just do a really thorough job and make sure we don't end up getting stuck at something down the road. So, um, so those three things, uh, cost efficiency, time efficiency, and, uh, and thoroughness, so we don't run into trouble. And um, we, we do have a few uh, uh, good firms that are uh, interested um, and would, uh, would be able to meet the timeline and get started right away and finish in time for an October um, notice to proceed with the grants for a purchase. Um, uh, cost range, um, a pretty variable depending on uh, what they run into and what the various agencies say as they submit them. Um, uh, some of the agencies like uh, I believe uh, Environmental Conservation and Historic Preservation have a 30 day review period in there and they can come back and ask for, um, for other things to be uh, included. Um, so, so we're saying a, a $3,000 to $10,000 cost range. And, um, and as you can see, we have close to $5,000 in a grant. And um, uh, so it could end up uh, costing us another uh, 5,000 matching it, um, or, or it could end up that the grant uh, covers um, everything. Gary, and do you need a motion to adopt that, uh, to accept that grant award? I just no place for any signatures on the form on the page. I didn't know if you need to. Um, yeah, it would it would be helpful to um, uh, to right. accept the grant and also to approve moving head with ahead with um, a NEPA review, selecting a firm and contracting for the the NEPA environmental review. Okay. Everyone want to make the motion as uh, Gary just stated that we uh, move ahead with the uh, NEPA policy act uh, to take care of environmental uh, uh, issue and, and, and then uh, move to accept the award that's on the back page from BDCC for $4,875. I don't I, move. Okay. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to uh, uh, move ahead with a National Environmental Policy Act, a NEPA form that's explained on page one. And page two is to adopt the award that we've uh, got from BDCC in the amount of $4,875 towards the environmental study. Any further discussion? Uh, one question. Uh, would the 106 review be part of this um, environmental review? Yes. Anything else? Sue? No? No, all set. Okay. Uh, there being no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion will say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Okay. Let's move on to financial. Notice uh, we didn't have any expense spread out, Scott. No, we haven't closed out yet. Um, we're still okay. recording prior year budget expenses. So I'll have that for you for the meeting house meeting. Okay. Still had a few items that she had not uh, recorded yet or that had not come through on your uh, warrants. Okay. So uh, can we expense and revenue report, Peter? Okay. Can we look at uh, page two of six, uh, five here on the general fund? Yep. It shows, uh, did we receive the uh, fire department charges or is that just an item in there? It's part way down, about third of the way down of, on the uh, uh, charges for services. Uh, $10,257. I thought Larry mentioned to me that that was involved with a uh, accident charge that yes. we received the money or something we build uh yeah we build for an accident and, and we did just receive a check for that it, it was not and so that is part of that recorded number 
That's the okay. actual. All right. Um, looks like we are doing quite well at recycle. Our, our uh, the money that we're over here should probably take care of the transportation costs, transfer station trucking or whatever they call it there. That okay. won't show up until we get the expense account sheet anyway. Right. Peter, question? Yeah, go ahead, Rock. The, the FEMA, the $300,000 we were going to get from FEMA a year ago, what's up with that? All those costs have been approved. They've been they've been uh, routed through the state and through the FEMA District One people. Everything that was on the worksheets has been accepted. We're just waiting on a check to come back from the federal government. Good. So they just move at a glacial pace. It just um, it'll be, it'll come. That's what they tell us. Okay. So, so that that's we recorded those revenues in this current budget year. So since we have those expenses in this budget year, good. So they should be an offset. All right, you'll let us know when they check our eyes. Oh, sure. And I think the total of everything is about 600000 Yeah, this, it's on page five, Rick. If you look on page five of uh, five there, it's a highway. It shows you the amount that's on the uh, received. Right. 609, almost 610000 Correct. Thank you. Yep. That would have been one of my questions. We got that We got that in our pocket yet, but I got just answered that before I got there. <laughs> Yeah. Anyone else have any uh, questions on the financials as we have them? Well, overall, it seems like our revenue has been good. Um, I would say that we're going to come out with overall positive year in relationship to our revenues and expenses. I think that, um, yeah, there, there was an, a lot of unusual revenue this year, and it's going to be a challenge to see what next year comes. I think the feds have been filling a lot of gaps on a lot of things. And, um, you know, like our bridge and a few other things, which has been very helpful for us. We haven't had to go and borrow and, and take on large capital expenses, but uh, it remains to be seen just how active they're gonna be going forward. But yes, I think last year was a good budget year for us as well. Scott, is the, the uh, solar revenue, has that been booked yet? The solar field over by the gravel pit? No, he had to delay his install because of the right of way issue with the Savage Garage that they are, um, he's doing some mining on his property there. And part of the area that they're mining impacts where he is placing the new uh, power for the solar array. So um, he has held off on installing the power until they're done with the mining portion behind Savages. Okay, but there's no legal contest between Savage. No, 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 it's just, it's just he, they had asked him to delay and he agreed. Okay. So the last I spoke to him, and I speak to him about every four to six weeks, he doesn't anticipate any problem and, and um, he anticipates we'll see the revenue in this current budget year starting July 1, so. Great, they got all their permits and everything they need. Everything is permitted, so. Beautiful. He just did, you know, he just did a voluntary. He was waiting until that other work was done. Right, that's encouraging. Because it does impact where they're going to put the transmission lines for the solar. Mm -hmm. So they just decided not to have a conflict or to have a problem. Mining can be a little bit of a messy operation, you know, the gravel mining. So. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Anything else on our financials? Hearing none, let's uh, move on down to review and approve order bills and warrants. Can you get a motion? I do, have, I do have them down here. We'll have to, uh, maybe when you come back, Peter, you can sign as well. Yep. But I, do, I can get Rick and Elijah to at least sign for now. We need a motion. Someone want to make a motion to approve them? Make the motion to approve orders, bills, and warrants. There's a second. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded to approve uh, <clears throat> orders, bills, and warrants. All those in favor would say aye. 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 Uh, agenda items for the August 9th meeting, which will be at the Rockingham Meeting House. I have the cemetery committee is going to begin a report. Um, We're going to have an update from uh, Walter on the historic structures report. If you remember, the board had authorized up to $10,000 to help with that piece of their overall um, long term capital planning. So that we're, we have interviewed firms. We have four that we're asking for follow-up interviews this week, and then we'll have a uh, proposal, hopefully, that will be authorized by you at that meeting so that we can move that process forward. And then 
the results of that process then will, I think, align with our budgeting discussions later on through the late fall and ultimately with the Save America's Treasurer's application process, which is what they're hopeful to uh, try to get to cover some of these you know, significant uh, foundation and other uh, improvements in the building. Okay, do we have a few minutes, few weeks on the, uh, anybody has any other agenda items for the August 9th meeting? Uh, just give us an email and we'll see about getting it on. Um, did anybody happen to see, well, I'll bring it up under the business. Uh, review agenda items for the joint board meeting. We got a month or so on that one. That's September 27th. So if anyone has any things they'd like to bring up on that. Other business. Uh, uh, Sue? Sue, do you have any other business? Sorry. No, I'm, I'm all set. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Elijah? No, nothing for me. Scott? All set, Peter. Thank you. Uh, Rick? Nothing. Bonnie? Nope. Okay. Other business. Uh, did you happen to see the article in the uh, minutes from Westminster about the bridge out there, Rick? You look like you're going to get your uh, bike paths there included in the new design, supposedly, according to what I've read in there. I saw that. I'm really thrilled. I've been in correspondence with uh, J.B. McCarthy, the engineer at VTrans, and uh, yeah. I think he listened to us, and uh, we're, we're the bike ped committee is pretty psyched. Yeah, not thrilled to have it being closed the road out there for 18 months. But no, well, that's, I guess. No, that's good news, good bad news. news yeah, I think. Right. It's yeah. Well, we'll cool. see where that goes, I guess. All mm -hmm. right, there is a need for the executive session uh, tonight. It'll be for real estate and personnel. Right. Um, so we need someone to make a motion. Right. I think it's the first one up there, I think. Got the card, this card. So. Yes. Yeah, I think you'll need one motion to go in. For, for, for those items. So you can do it all at one time if you want. All right, do you want to use that? I, I move that the board enter executive session to discuss. Uh, real estate. Real estate. And personnel. And personnel and state, and uh, the, the corresponding statutory provision is Title I, Section 313A2. That's, That's it. One. So we need a second. Someone want a second? Looks like Elijah. Elijah seconded. So uh, we will be in the executive session once we get everybody closed off of Zoom, except those that are supposed to be on and board members. And we may have a statement uh, uh, once we come out. So.